Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Memorial Day is right around the corner, a three-day weekend. Mm, I can smell it already. I can smell a barbecue. Are you a pretty good barbecuer? You know what? My forte is smoking. Oh, really? You should yeah. cut back on that. It's not good for you. <laughs> oh, you mean smoking meat. I, I got a smoker, yes. I got a Weber smoker. Is that what your kids call it now, smoking meat? <laughs> <laughs> All right. On the next Men Are So Smart, we will have tips for you because we are master barbecuers. That's next. You know, if there's one dish, I get that from Letterman. <laughs> if there's one dish that signifies summer in America, it's ribs. Ooh, dang. God, I love ribs. Me too. Cooked outdoors in the backyards of America, ribs are a cherished pastime. They are the stuff of smoke and live fire and the glory of long afternoons spent in lawn chairs with cold beer. Mm. Passionate cooks keep a careful eye, periodically basting a little here or prodding there as a hungry audience of family and friends watches the artistry of Sweet Lou Gallagher unfold. <laughs> so ribs... Uh, they're an indigenous American food, says Indeed. Uh, Meathead Goldwyn, <laughs> Meathead. <laughs> founder of popular website AmazingRibs.com and author of Meathead, The Science <laughs> of Great Barbecue and Grilling. Uh, the way we cook ribs and the sauces we use are all original to America. Simple as ribs may appear, there is an art to mastering them. We know them, Ronnie and oh, I. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. As anyone from a weekend warrior to a champion pit master can attest. The reason they have all these festivals and barbecue cook-offs all around the country, the reason for the fanfare is that ribs are really quite detailed, says Curtis Stone, chef owner of the Los Angeles restaurants Maud and Gwen, the latter of which includes an in-house butcher shop if you want to do it right, ribs take time and skill, my friends. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so, as you pork ribs obviously are the holy grail, you stroll the meat aisle in your local butcher shop or supermarket, and the sheer variety of rib choices can be daunting. Yeah. In addition to the various cuts of pork ribs, you might find large beef ribs or even racks of lamb ribs oh. vying for attention mm. but pork by far is the most popular when you say ribs almost everybody thinks you're talking about pork ribs they seem to be the holy grail part of the fascination with pork uh golden was says is the presentation most americans associate barbecue with pork ribs slathered with incredibly rich sweet tomato based kansas city style barbecue sauce all ribs, regardless of the cut, come from the rib cage of the animal. This is a tough cut of meat coming from muscles around the bone that are used for locomotion and to also hold the rib cage together. The cut known as baby backs come from the top of the ribs nearest the spine and lie just below the loin muscle. The bones are slightly curved with most of the meat on top of the ribs. Uh, so baby back ribs are basically your beginner ribs. Okay. Uh, they're probably the most common because they're easy to cook. They also tend to be the most expensive because they consist of loin meat, which sits higher on the hog and tends to be leaner and initially more tender than lower cuts. The racks generally tend to be smaller than other racks and the amount of meat will vary depending on how the butcher cuts the rack from the loin. Usually a half inch or so of meat. If you buy a loin roast, you'll get a slab of baby backs underneath. For a meatier rack of baby backs, sometimes you can ask your butcher to cut the slab off the roast. This way you've got your baby backs and a bonus pork loin roast. Now my favorite has got to be, and what you should buy for your Memorial Day barbecue, spare ribs. Because the meat comes from the loin, baby backs tend to cook more quickly than other ribs. As you move down the rib cage, extending around the chest to the stomach, you'll find the spare ribs. These are larger ribs with the meat situation between the bones rather than on top. 
but there's a lot more marbling and connective tissue. Because of this, spare ribs take a little longer to cook than baby backs, but are more tender and have more flavor. Now, here's what I recommend. There's, there's two ways of doing this, Ronnie. Number one, if you're gonna use them on the barbecue, maybe because you're out at a park or the lake or something and you're using a community barbecue, it becomes a lot more difficult because you you don't have as much indirect flame. Right. The secret to cooking good spare ribs, and I'm gonna share this with you right now, is this. I would suggest you cook them in your oven ahead of time at a very low temperature, maybe 200 tops, and let them cook in there for several hours. The last thing that you do is to put them on the fire and only for a small amount of time, Ron. You know, my wife actually sticks ribs in a pressure cooker for a time. I don't know how long typically, but pressure cooks them for a while and then we put them on the barbecue. And when you pull them off, the meat literally it falls, falls off, off the bone. bone. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this next uh, pit master, Sylvie Curry, she says, I only cook spare ribs, and she's on the co competition barbecue circuit. In competition, she notes people cook spare ribs because there is more marbling yeah. and more moisture in the meat. Mm -hmm. Where baby backs are a clean rectangular cut, spare ribs are oddly shaped, owing to a strip of cartilage, fat, and connective tissue called rib tips or brisket. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Dang. Uh, along with baby backs, this is probably the most common cut of pork ribs in Southern California. However, in many places, the tips are removed to create what is called the center cut or St. Louis cut, which is what we do. We do St. Louis cuts here. A uh, rack of center cut ribs is sometimes referred to as mock baby backs because of the rectangular shape of the rack. A good butcher will trim or clean a rack of spare ribs for you removing the rib tips. It's also easy to do yourself at home. If you do remove them, save the tips. They're loaded with flavor and moisture. Cook them with your center rack, keeping in mind that the tips will be done faster, given their size. Then chop them up, toss them in with a little sauce if you'd like, and serve as an appetizer while the guests are waiting for the center rack to finish. With any rack, remove the membrane of the underside of the ribs next to the bone, as it cooks, the membrane becomes rubbery and chewy. I hate that. Yeah. You can ask your butcher to remove it or peel the membrane away yourself using a butter knife. Yep. Uh, so this next one is country ribs. Not my favorite, Ronnie. Yeah, we, we have them here from time to time. Uh, depending on the region or ethnic market, particular area, you might also find other cuts labeled as ribs. One common cut is country ribs. They're not true ribs, but include meat from the shoulder or blade of the pig, or shoulder blade of the pig. Uh, and it's a fatty cut, also very flavorful. Country ribs are usually sold boneless and are cut into rib-shaped pieces. My wife cooks these in a slow cooker when she does them. Oh, okay. And here's the thing. Uh, you know how picky I am. Uh, I, I don't like stuff cooked in a slow cooker because... Everything takes, tastes the same to me. Chicken, uh, pork, it all tastes like it came out of this pulled pork kind of recipe, <laughs> which I'm not a fan of. Oh. All right, let's talk about some science. Before cooking ribs, it's important to season them. While you'll see complex rubs, bastes, and sauces used on competition shows, ribs don't have to be that elaborate. When cooking at home, sometimes don't even want the taste of a rub, says the chef. I prefer plain old salt and pepper. Goldwyn recommends one half teaspoon kosher salt or a quarter teaspoon table small per pound of ribs. And rather than using a store-bought rub, most of which contains salt and will throw off your seasoning ratio, come up with your own or look up a simple recipe that doesn't contain salt. Hmm. See, for me, we take mustard and we kind of coat them with mustard and then we do put a commercial rub on them. 
uh, and a couple of the rubs I have are amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I really, uh, to well, me. Do you want to recommend one? or? Um, you know what? There's one that I've used. It's called Big Kahuna. I've seen that. And it's very good. It's kind of a uh, sweet uh, flavor. It's a Hawaiian flavor. It is. And it's amazing on ribs. It is really amazing on ribs. Uh, in a smoker, at least. Uh, I did some... It's been it's been a few months, but I did some St. Louis style ribs with Big Kahuna, Big Hit. I mean, they were they were amazing. Another tip I wanted to mention before we get to this one, uh, I I have a Weber gas grill. I have a Weber charcoal grill too. I sometimes I prefer one or the other. It just depends on how, what mood it was in. With my Weber gas barbecue, it has a rack above the main grill. Right. And I, I was going to mention this earlier, forgot. What I will do is if we're not cooking in the, in the house and cooking them first off, I will put them on that top run, and uh, the rack, and I'll turn on the first. So the rack is here. Way in the back. I and think. then I'll turn on this front rack right here, and I'll put it about medium, not much more than that, and close the top. My Weber has a, a thermostat right on the front of it so I always know what the temperature is and it works perfectly and I'll let them sit in there for two hours Ronnie in right. indirect heat yep you know and then again uh, what, what you're trying to achieve here is fall off the bone tenderness and I think that's yet way too to accomplish that so in in smoking they call it low and slow mm -hmm. you cook them low heat and you cook them for a long time so, and I, every time I cook something on the smoker, I keep unbelievably, uh, incredibly, you know, detailed notes so that I can follow it next time as far as even how much charcoal I'm using, uh, what the temperature is. So it's, smoking is a little bit... Uh, you know what, you want to know how committed we are to barbecuing and smoking you did a, thir a turkey for Thanksgiving. What time did you get up to start it? Oh, no, no, it wasn't turkey. It was a uh, pork shoulder. Okay. Uh, four o'clock in the morning. There you go. It was ready four o'clock in the afternoon. That's commitment right there. Yeah. I tell you what. Yep. All right. So this next tip is let them sit. Mm -hmm. Let the seasoned ribs sit in the refrigerator for at least a few hours or up to overnight, which is what we do, yep. uh, before cooking. As the salt gets wet on the surface of the meat, it melts, causing an electrical charge. This charge causes the ions in the salt to penetrate deep into the meat, improving the flavor. It also softens it up a little bit. The sauce you use can be key, my friends. Finish your ribs. Finish your ribs with a barbecue sauce if you like. Store-bought sauces are fine. There are many good ones out there. But if you'd rather personalize your sauce, start by tweaking your favorite store-bought sauce to find out what flavors and nuances you like. Then experiment with making your own. Just remember to sauce the ribs at the very end of cooking. If you sauce before the ribs are done, the sauce and your ribs will simply burn. Yeah, that sauce is... I, you know what, Ron? Um, we have a mutual friend. I, I, I know you know my buddy Tony Cox. Oh, yeah. Well, Tony was asked a while back to provide a, a recipe for something or other, maybe a magazine or something. And so he called me and asked me if I had one. And I told him, no, I, I really, I, I'm not a big fan of barbecue sauce per se. Mm -hmm. I don't like really barbecue saucy flavor getting all over my face. But here's my point. Tony found a recipe for sauce. And he goes, you got to try it. And so I thought, I'll do it for Super Bowl Sunday. Right. And barbecue uh, some ribs. I must have spent three hours <laughs> putting the sauce together. Yeah. And then another three hours cleaning up the mess I made making the sauce. And that took forever because it was burnt uh, vinegar uh, and ketchup. And uh, oh, my God. Yep. You know what? If you're really, if you're that OCD... God bless you. As far as I'm concerned, anything you can buy off the shelf is going to be much better than, than what you could make yourself. Yep. Uh, next up is wood chips. So this is particularly if you're going to smoke. Mm -hmm. Wood flavor or smoke is always a nice touch, but isn't necessary. 
If you'd like to add, if you'd like, add a handful of chips, but don't soak them beforehand, to the coals, uh, replenishing as needed for the first hour or so. You get a really nice smoke ring in just 30 minutes, says Goldwyn. Now, what I found out about chips, or, or meat in general, is once it, the meat reaches a certain temperature, the outside closes off and it's not going to absorb any more smoke. So there really isn't a need to smoke during the whole time you're barbecuing or smoking. Um, doesn't take a lot. And there are numerous flavors of wood out there. Um, the three that I have are hickory, uh, cherry, and mesquite. Mesquite is a tiny bit overpowering. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, my favorite probably is the hickory. Yeah. Hickory smoked is... And you can buy good. briquettes with hickory in them as well. You can. I've seen them at yes. the store before. Yep. Uh, when we first started doing the show over a year ago, one of the episodes that we did was uh, barbecues, charcoal versus gas. And you'll see that link uh, uh, come up above my head here. Uh, you know what? Even in the last year, the amount of times that I've barbecued, I still don't really have a preference. I enjoy both equally um, and for opposing reasons. The beauty of the gas barbecue is that you can walk outside and be bar barbecuing in two minutes, right. if not shorter. Yep. Um, you know, with, uh, whereas opposed to charcoal, it's going to be a good 30 minutes or so before, maybe even 45 minutes before you can put meat on the grill. So, um, convenience, uh, we'll tell you more if you watch that episode. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I prefer to use gas. And I'll, I'll tell you this, do you have a, a chimney for your barbecue to start your... Oh, oil? yes, I do now. I got one of those. That's amazing. It's mm -hmm. I can't imagine... So, you don't have to use... Uh, lighter, lighter fluid. fluid. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the worst thing you can ever do, use lighter fluid. Yeah, These chimneys are inexpensive. They're unbelievably efficient. I start with like two pieces of newspaper and I can get my coals up and running in about 10 minutes yeah. and warm enough where I can actually set them in the barbecue and, and start barbecuing. Mm -hmm. um, so the one of the keys here obviously is the right temperature. Uh, the, the One of the keys of good ribs is low cooking temperature. If you cook ribs quickly or to a normal pork temperature of 140 or 145 degrees, they're going to be impossible to chew. As you chew them, they're going to chew back at you. Mm -hmm. um, Chewbacca. Yeah. yeah. Uh, over high heat, the problem in the meat, the, the proteins in the meat shrink and squeeze out moisture, and the meat becomes dry. Cook cooking temperature will range from 225 to 300 degrees. I like to keep the temperature right around 250. In smoking, it's about two and a quarter is the, about the optimum temperature. I've, I've never smoked before. I don't know much about it, but I'm learning a lot here today. If you think about it, your grill or smoker can function just like an oven. Invest in a good grill thermometer so you can keep track of the ambient temperature of the air directly above or alongside the meat, not in the meat. You don't want to be poking your meat with the thermometer poker. Um, honestly, that's just letting all of the juices run out. Uh, and, you know, you can uh, regulate the temperature where you're cooking. Uh, I actually have a grill thermometer. It's wireless. That the thermometer it has two probes. One goes in the meat, and one goes clips to the grill itself, mm -hmm. and then it comes out to a little uh, thermometer, a, a little sending unit, and then the sending unit goes to a handheld unit oh that I God. have. It's made by Maverick, and it's not inexpensive. It was about sixty bucks, but. If you're really gonna do a good job of barbecuing and smoking, you have to know the temperature of your meat and you have to know the temperature of your of your grill itself. Especially with pork. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, you don't wanna undercook pork. That would be disastrous. Yeah. Uh, the next up is cooking time. Cooking time will uh, vary depend on the temperature and the type of the rack. Baby backs might take anywhere from three to five hours to cook completely. And for spare or country cub, uh, cut ribs, figure four to six hours. There are a few ways to test for doneness. Uh, Goldwyn recommends the bending the meat. Uh, if the meat easily cracks 
and as the rack is bent, it's probably done. Curry uses a toothpick, push a toothpick in between the bones, and if there's a little to no resistance, they're ready. Man, I'm getting so hungry, Ryan. I'm, man, I'm, I'm ready right now. All right, so uh, those are some tips for your barbecue with the Memorial Day holiday approaching. Boy, I got, I got one more hack. Okay. When you pull them out, wrap them up in foil, <laughs> wrap them up in a towel, and stick them in an ice chest. And let them come down to temperature very slowly. Uh, when we have done uh, like the pork shoulder before, I think it sat in there for like an hour and a half. And when I undid everything, the pork shoulder, you have to kind of shred. It was so tender and shredded so easily. Um, and what happens is as you cook it, the little tendons in the meat, they kind of turn into spirals. And as they start to cool down slowly, they unwrap and everything gets oh, loose. Oh, yeah, that's a great tip. So that is that is my biggest tip for for barbecue slash smoking. All right, so we've learned a lot today. Uh, most importantly, do not put barbecue sauce on your ribs until the very end. Otherwise, you turn out to have uh, burnt ribs Eesh. that are undercooked on the inside. Yeah. Yep. That's a disaster. You know what, Ronnie? Since you had one more hack, mm -hmm. I've got one more hack. All right. If you are a gas barbecue user, you should always have two tanks of propane. Oh, boy. Now, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world when it's just you and the family. Right. But if you're barbecuing for people that you're having over to the house and you run out of gas in the middle of the meal. That's embarrassing. You're screwed. Yeah. You really are. And, you know, that meat is going to be out there. What, what do you do with it? Well, you put it in the oven right. while you run to the 76 station to get propane. Right. Have two tanks and always have that other one filled. Yeah. You know what? Even if you're not sure because you pay for propane by the gallon okay so if you think you're low and but you still have a little in there don't take a chance just take it back to the gas station or top it off yes get it topped off yeah don't take that chance happy memorial day to you uh we hope you spend it with all of your family and friends and we appreciate you watching this last year to men are so smart yeah uh, we have all of our information on both of us listed below we have blogs and social media pages and our website is men are so smart uh, we thank you and we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our show it means a lot uh, we've seen a, a spike in the number of subscribers that we've had recently that's a good thing it is it means yeah. that maybe we're doing something right it's catching on word of mouth and you know another thing too I was thinking about this the other day the name men are so smart might be a little off-putting for women but the thing is we prove with every episode that we're not <laughs> we're not that smart <laughs> we're not so please don't be put off by the name of the show watch for the rich chewy goodness you've come to know as men are so smart i'm lou gallagher i'm corvette ronnie and we'll see you on the next men are so smart